So for you participants, we are recording this webinar and it will be archived on the Penn State website under the events. That is where we have all of our listings of our future webinars and our archived past webinars. I'm going to give us one more minute. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, welcome everyone to the getting ready for the energy efficiency webinar. Um, I would like to thank everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to log in with us today. Uh, just a few logistics first. Uh, we do have a chat pod where you can ask questions throughout the webinar. However, we do plan on having Q&A after the presentation. So if you wanna save your questions until then, um, that would be okay too, okay? Um, also, just be sure that your mics are muted because sometimes we get some feedback and echoing if you're not muted, okay? Uh, the trivia question, do you know how many sites and organizations practice the ISO 50001 based energy management, otherwise known as the 50001 Reading? Um, does anybody know or have any idea? You can raise your hand and, and let us know. Just a little bit of trivia. If you happen to go onto the DOE website under Energy Management Systems, they have a really nice list um, with all the different companies and all the different sites and organizations that have been recognized for the 50,001 Ready Program. And there's like 33 some sites and 10 organizations that have been recognized so far. Within those 33 sites though, some sites, um, some companies have multiple sites within them, you know? So um, it, it's really interesting if you do go to DOE's website and look at all of those companies that have been recognized for 50,001. So um, introductions, today's presenter. Um, myself, I am Denise Bechtel. I'm the team lead for energy and environment with PENTAP. I oversee the programs and personnel responsible for offering energy efficiency and pollution prevention assistance to all small and mid-sized companies of every sector throughout Pennsylvania. Uh, over the past 15 years or so, I've performed more than 250 on-site assessments to help companies reduce their energy consumption, um, decrease pollution and related costs, improve environmental compliance, and decrease um, greenhouse gas emissions. So you can find out more information about me um, on our Pentap website. Uh, today, it's really not about me. Today, it's about Ethan. Okay, um, Ethan Rogers, um, I'd like to introduce you to him. He's our guest speaker. So Ethan has over 20 years of experience in industrial energy efficiency. His background includes working in industry organizations. He has managed programs, developed projects, led teams, and facilitated initiatives that change how energy savings are measured, managed, and valued. He joined the U.S. Department of Energy, DOE, Advanced Manufacturing Office Technical Partnerships Team in 2019, and he works on incorporating energy management standards such as ISO 50001 and SEP 50001 into energy efficiency programs and corporate sustainability standards. He also supports the Better Plants Program and other technical assistance initiatives. He has deep subject matter area expertise in industrial energy efficiency, combined heat and power, uh, and energy management system policies and programs. He has a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry from Eastern Illinois University and a Master's in Business Administration from Butler University. 
So welcome, Ethan. Um, thank you for being here with us today. Um, we look forward to hearing uh, you speak and talk to us about 50,001 Ready and everything about that. So Ethan, I'm going to give you the mic. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Denise. Thank you very much for that that uh, uh, great introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, happy to be here today and have the opportunity to talk with you about uh, the Department of Energy's 50,001 Ready Program and uh, Navigator uh, platform tool. Um, so let's see, get myself to advance here, or maybe I need to uh, request. Okay. There we go. Oh, I see it advanced twice on me. I'm already off to a great start. Um, so the uh, 50,001 Ready Program uh, is related to the ISO 50001 Energy Management Standard, a voluntary standard uh, that establishes, uh, as the title indicates, an energy management system. Uh, and it's uh, the kind of go-to uh, energy management standard internationally, right? It's uh, known throughout the world. It's used throughout the world, establishes standard practices. It's very similar uh, in its structure, its high-level structure, to the ISO 9001 Quality Management Standard and the ISO 14001 Environmental Management Standard. Uh, and as such, you know, if you're familiar with either of those standards, uh, any of these types of management standards, the idea behind it is that you establish uh, SOPs of what, how you're going to do stuff, right? Say what you're going to do, do what you said you're going to do, and document that you did what you said you were going to do, right? And that, you know, my first experience to this was through ISO 9000, and it really can be um, just a, a paradigm shifting experience for an organization to put in place a management standard on how they do something with like safety, environment, quality, or of course, energy, energy efficiency. Uh, and the upside of this is that uh, the changes you make persist. You know, it's just not a one and done thing. Uh, they persist. Uh, it exists outside of the individual. It becomes part of the corporate culture. Uh, the standard follows the plan, do, check, act cycle of continuous improvement, which again is why uh, these savings persist. Um, and it involves everybody from uh, top level management to the folks on the floor. And so, uh, I'm waiting for my slide to change here, and I don't want it to advance too quickly. <laughs> Let's try this again. Not a, okay, you're in advance for me. Thank you. Um, it was working in practice. You know, Murphy's Law. Uh, so the DOE approach uh, is to you know, provide a lot of tools and information to help organizations along this journey. Uh, energy management is one of those things that it's not uh, a destination, but it's actually a journey. And so we feel that we can help the most organizations by providing them uh, examples, informational tools, uh, being involved in the development of standards. Uh, so we're active in the ISO community uh, around uh, energy management. Uh, we develop a lot of informational tools, which we'll talk to you about today, and uh, as of course the, uh, the Navigator standard. We uh, work with utilities, we work with organizations like PENTAP to create awareness of energy management, the features of it, the benefits of it, and uh, do what we can to accelerate the adoption of energy management uh, across not just the industrial sector, but across the economy. So, I'll try my button again here. There we go, it's working. Um, we have three different areas that we kind of uh, uh, break the, our activities down into. The 50,001 Ready Program, uh, which of course is the, uh, the biggest part of uh, my presentation today. Uh, the ISO 50001 certification and the Superior Energy Performance uh, Program. Uh, and the best way to think about this, I think, is I'm still having trouble advancing. I'm not sure why. Uh, is to, with a management system like the ISO standard, you create trust. It's a very robust way of organizing your activities around uh, energy management. 
And so if you have in place an ISO 50001 certified energy management system, people can trust that you're doing those activities, you're engaging in the practices that will, you know, if not save energy, manage your energy. I guess it, it, it really does. It's going to save energy, right? If, if you're monitoring things, you're paying attention to it, if you've got people throughout your organization focused on it, you are going to save energy. You're going to reduce operating costs. And so if you tell another organization, we're ISO 50001 certified, they can trust that you know what you're doing around energy management. You know, all kinds of uh, different organizations have vetted that standard. It, uh, it's just one of those things that creates uh, a recognition that you know what you're doing. The, the Superior Energy Performance 50001 certification is built around a very robust measurement and verification protocol. It involves a top-down regression analysis and a bottom-up uh, check. Uh, it's one of the most robust m and protocols out there. So if you're using that, uh, if you are uh, measuring your energy savings using that protocol and you've gotten certified, it means that people can trust that your numbers are good, your energy savings numbers are good. Uh, and this is really important if you were to, uh, uh, you wanted to monetize your savings in some regard. So, uh, but today I'm going to talk about the 50,001 Ready Program, uh, a navigator. Uh, if you have interest in the Spear Energy Performance Program or certification, certainly be happy to talk with you individually afterwards. But I want to talk mostly today about this online tool, this free tool that takes that standard, the ISO 50001 standard, and breaks it down. The standard itself is not that much, uh, not that long a document. You know? It tells you what a management system needs to have in order for it to become certified. It doesn't really tell you how to do it. You know? And so when we uh, set about to create the, the, the Ready program, we wanted to uh, give people the information and tools that would help them set up an energy management system to answer that how and you know what and where and whom type of questions that are necessary uh, to create an ISO 50001 compliant energy management system. Uh, and then we also recognized that not everybody uh, needs or wants to go all the way through that journey to get ISO certification. Uh, that uh, they may want to do most of it, uh, but uh, not necessarily feel that they, they need to do all of it. Uh, and so we created this as a recognition program. And the idea is, is that when you complete, we've, we've broken down all of those activities into 25 tasks. Once you've done those 25 tasks, you can self-attest to it, and DOE will, will recognize that accomplishment. We'll say that you're 50,001 ready, which means like you're ready to pursue certification if uh, you so desired. And you know, depending on where you're at, it, it might be about 85, you know, 80, 90, 95 percent uh, of the journey is complete, right? Uh, there's still additional work to do to become certified. You'd have to contract with a third party to come in and do audits. And there's some additional things you might have to do, but you're you're ready. And so the 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 name of the program is is uh, a clue as to uh, where you're at. So I mentioned that we break it down into 25 tasks. Uh, ISO has created seven. Uh, areas uh, for its management standards. They call it the high-level structure. So the 9,000, 14,000, and 50,000 50, standards fall into this category. So we reflect that with a dashboard. And then we've broken that down further into these 25 tasks. So you can see the seven key areas, you know, leadership tasks, planning tasks, support tasks, operation. Uh, and, uh, you know, You've got a, a dashboard that shows how you're progressing. Each of those dials will register how many, how far along you are uh, in progressing towards it. The guidance is kind of broken down into these individual sections about, like I say, getting it done. So you've got information on what needs to be accomplished. It gives you an overview 
on how it's connected to the standard, the ISO standard, uh, gives you guidance to uh, the task, how to do the task, what's required. Uh, and if uh, you already are engaged in the uh, Energy Star uh, program, it gives you information on how to migrate some of that information over to the, uh, the navigator. I mentioned track uh, uh, the progress. Um, there's all kinds of uh, uh, tips and um, uh, information on the sheets that let you know, let other folks know, everybody in your, your energy team know how you're progressing along. It mentions access to worksheets here. And I think one of the, for me, one of my favorite parts about the Navigator uh, is the uh, playbook. We've taken those tasks and we have created individual documents for each one of them uh, that you can fill out uh, whether electronically or if you want to go old school and uh, do it in paper and I put it in a three ring binder. Uh, I remember when I was uh, working at the uh, Manufacturing Extension Partnership Center uh, in Indiana, which is similar to uh, uh, PenTap, right? Uh, we did a lot of lean manufacturing training and we would help organizations implement 9,000 quality systems. Uh, lots of three ring binders, right? Uh, central location for all of your documents and, and such. So when our folks created uh, the playbook, one of the things that they were mindful of is that people like to you know, tweak things. They like to tailor documents to the needs of their organization. Perhaps they already have a 9,000 or 14,000 uh, system in place and they need to, you know, they, they would like to use those documents and move them over. So we've made these Word documents. They're not PDFs, they're Word documents, which means that you can trust with them, right? You can tailor them to your needs. Uh, and um, uh, it's easier to share and get input on it and fill them out and everything. So again, trying to make this, this tool as flexible as we can uh, to help folks uh, you know, implement the management system. Another feature of uh, the Ready program is the multi-site functionality. And this reflects uh, uh, some recent changes to the ISO standard itself. Um, in the past, you might have to pursue certification on a facility by facility basis. And that can be uh, very time consuming and by extension expensive, right? Um, and in some organizations, not everything's happening at the site level. Uh, over the years, one of the things that we've observed and that a lot of uh, programs out in the utility sector space have observed is that in the industrial space, a lot of the energy management activities happen at the plant and that information rolls up to the corporate level. In the commercial and sometimes institutional sector, a lot of the activities happen at the corporate level and are pushed down to the facility level. Uh, and so depending on what type of organization you have and the structure you have, having this flexibility uh, could be important, right? And so we anticipate that some, some activities will happen at the central office, uh, not least of which is monitoring of the activities going on at the different plants. So you could have a central office function and they can take care of things, individual sites, have their responsibilities um, and, and activities that they're doing. And the central office is gonna obviously wanna be able to track what's going on at the different facilities uh, as well as communicate with them. And the navigator enables you to do just that. It gives you the ability to uh, see what activities the different facilities have done. You can see the screenshot here, there's three different facilities. You can see which of the 25 tasks they've done um, you can uh, you know, send them information, uh, you can send them requests, you can assign responsibilities, uh, that type of information. And it's not just usable within your own organization, it's usable uh, with any contractors you have. Uh, we're seeing the use of the Navigator by utility sector programs, by organizations such as PenTap, by ESCOs, and the like. So it's a, a very nice, uh, robust tool in that regard. I mentioned that uh, uh, the uh, standard is built around the plan, do, check, act philosophy. Uh, this is, I think, the most common um, 
uh, concept that you see in continuous improvement, uh, that you're constantly you know, revisiting things. It's not just one and done. You create a process. And everybody is trained on this process. And so we created a series of tools, uh, software tools, that are accessible through the navigator as well as uh, independent of that to help organizations in that regard. And these include the uh, EMPI Lite tool and the MPI tool, which help you do a regression analysis. You establish your baseline. You figure out what your uh, variables are influencing your use of energy. You can do a regression analysis. And this is, a, we believe, a much more um, um, robust way of tracking energy use and predicting savings and documenting savings and the like. Uh, we have a register of implemented energy improvement actions. Uh, as the title indicates, it's a tool for you know, listing out all the different projects you might do, the actions you might take, uh, and the uh, savings that, uh, uh, that they accomplish. And then the energy footprint tool uh, tracks consumption, uh, helps you determine what are your significant energy uses. Uh, just a, a nice, uh, robust tool for, for doing that activity. So let's look a little bit more at the, ener the energy footprint tool. As I say, you can put in your information about your utility information. My guess is many of you have created your own Excel versions of this, or maybe your utility company has something, uh, different dashboards you can use. But this is a nice, nice robust tool. And uh, uh, in addition to tracking your energy consumption, you can even calculate your uh, related greenhouse gas emissions. And you can see the URL down there at the bottom of the, the slide uh, as to where you can go download that tool. So. The Energy Performance Indicator Tool, as I men mentioned, this is the uh, regression analysis tool, top-down regression analysis tool. You can uh, take information from Energy Star Portfolio Manager and import it into this. Uh, the output files uh, are uh, part of what we use for recognition uh, in uh, the Ready program. Uh, so uh, we've tried to make the uh, online tool uh, user friendly. There is a, a the more robust Excel tool that uh, uh, is associated with this. And here I mentioned the uh, register uh, of implemented energy performance improvement actions. And you can see the different columns here for tr documenting the different actions that you're taking and the energy uh, savings impacts that they are having. So I want to give you an example of the potential here. Um, you know, DOE engages a lot of companies through its Better Plants program. Uh, which is uh, our recognition and uh, technical assistance and engagement program. And Whirlpool has a facility out in uh, Amana, Iowa. I, I suspect it used to be an Amana plant. Uh, all the brands are kind of consolidating these days, aren't they? And uh, they uh, adopted uh, the 50,001 uh, Ready program. Uh, they used the tool uh, to guide their implementation of an energy management system. And as you can see, they reduced their energy consumption by 15% and their costs by almost half a million dollars. And uh, they did this, you know, by using the tool, they discovered some fairly, I don't know, to me, almost obvious uh, types of projects, but projects that they might not have identified without having an energy management system in place. Because one of the things that management systems do is they're, they force you to ask why all the time. You know, and, and so they looked at their process and they found that they had these curing ovens that were not insulated. Um, because they'd had them on the line for, for years, years and years and years. And of course, if anybody, you know, looks in the oven, you know, it's going to radiate heat from it. And they said, well, can we inflate this? And it turned out they could inflate it. They did. Uh, and that was a big one, right? Uh, just like sealing up your house makes a big difference in, in your energy costs. Uh, they also address compressed air leaks. That's a really common one. And then, um, of course, they established uh, metrics for monitoring this, tracking the performance and like. So big, big change in their energy consumption. It was so successful that they're now planning on using the, the Ready tool in uh, nine other facilities in North America. 
So I mentioned that um, uh, Ready is a recognition program, and there are essentially three s- steps to this. Uh, the first step is you complete these 25 tasks. Uh, the second test task is you submit your energy performance data. Uh, that's the uh, printout from the uh, EMPI Lite tool or uh, EPA's portfolio manager. Uh, and you have management uh, sign off uh, on this, uh, and you send that information to us, and we do a bit of a desk review on it. And then uh, we recognize you. Uh, we recognize you on our website. Uh, we send you this nice little um, uh, print uh, piece of paper that says, you know, we recognize you, congratulations. We usually do a success story on you, so our communications folks will, will contact you and interview you, and we will put that information out on our website and in a public um, a release our, on our um, um, Twitter feed, on our other social media stuff. So it's uh, kind of nice. Uh, conceivably, you could have uh, a deputy assistant secretary of the Department of Energy tweeting congratulations to your company for becoming 50,001 ready recognized. Uh, so. Uh, if that is something that you think uh, would uh, be uh, appreciated uh, in your company, you know, it's, it's a nice, nice perk, if you will. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was the Ready uh, Program Partners uh, aspect of the program. And uh, PenTap is going to become one of our partners. So um, I don't think we have all the paperwork quite done yet, but so I'll preemptively congratulate them, welcome them to the partner program. I'm sure we'll see their their logo on our partner website uh, soon. But what this does is um, uh, we kind of block out a piece of our a navigator platform just for Pentap or another partner and uh, put uh, some of their logos there and it gives them the ability to communicate to their customers, if you will. Uh, and, uh, um, that are using the tool. So as PenTap uh, joint becomes a partner, um, they will be able to communicate uh, with uh, the cohort that they're going to be developing and that Denise, I think, is going to talk with you a little bit about later on. Um, and uh, track uh, how folks are doing, different uh, participants in the cohort are doing uh, through their room, if you will, within uh, the navigator. Uh, so it's a bit of a co-branding uh, and cooperation thing. And as you can see in this uh, little graphic, uh, the, the ability to send information, communicate, and, and track the progress of folks uh, involved in the cohort. Um, that um, little, uh, I guess you could call it a certificate, that we would send out saying congratulations on being uh, 50,001 ready. It would also have uh, the PenTap logo on it, uh, and um, they would be able to create some custom guidance uh, within uh, the platform that would be available to participants uh, in their, their cohorts. Uh, there's also going to be a joint recognition. Uh, I mentioned earlier that um, you know, we do uh, case studies or success stories. Uh, we send information out on social media congratulating people on this, and so there'd be some uh, joint uh, uh, collaboration on, on highlighting that as well. So an example of this, uh, one of the organizations that is currently a partner uh, with uh, the Ready program is Focus on Energy Wisconsin. Uh, the state of Wisconsin has a statewide efficiency utility, and they've got many, many different programs. Uh, they've got this large customer program that has all kinds of subsets of programs. And one of them uh, uses the 50,001 Ready Navigator as a tool to help companies implement energy management systems. And they really like it because it, because the Navigator is built around the ISO standard, it takes people on a journey that is going to be compatible with the ISO standard. But 10 years ago, there were an awful lot of energy management programs out there that were kind of one-offs. And they weren't necessarily compatible with the 50,001 standard. And, and there were reasons for that. You know, the standard is complicated. and Not everybody was ready to jump into that. Uh, but what the navigator does is it gives you kind of a glide path 
uh, towards that that potential certification. And uh, they've had good success with it. And it's interesting that a lot of organizations, we're hearing this from across the country, that didn't think they wanted to go for certification by virtue of taking this kind of glide path into it. At some point, they get it up, you know, they've, they've self-tested, they're, they recognize it's ready, and they're like, wow, for just a little bit more effort, we can go ahead and get the certification and get that, you know, the big piece of paper, if you will, <laughs> that, that attests to the quality of their, their management system. So the last thing I wanted to talk to you about was the cohorts. Uh, the Department of Energy Advanced Media uh, uh, is uh, doing a lot of different types of, uh, a lot of different offices within the Department of Energy are uh, starting to offer these virtual cohorts. And we're partnering with organizations like PenTap to provide them. And the idea behind this is over a period of months uh, to have a series of online webinars and a one-on-one -on -one cons consultation with members of a cohort. And if you think about a cohort, not, I guess that's a term that's very common to me because uh, I've been in the space for a while, but may not be the uh, a term of use that most people are familiar with. But the general idea is that you grab a group of organizations together or the representatives from a group of organizations and they go through an experience together. Uh, in this case, that experience is going to be a series of uh, workshops and working with a coach and uh, using uh, similar tools and taking this journey into energy management together. Uh, so it's going to involve homework. It's going to involve one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's going to involve you know, providing information, but they all take that that journey together. And the value of that is kind of this one-on-one -on -one sharing, right? It's one thing for a person at the front of the classroom to tell you, hey, you know, this might work for you. It's another thing when another organization with a similar system to you, that we generally don't put competitors in the room together, but a lot of people have compressed air systems. A lot of people have steam systems. You know, everybody's got induction electro electrical motors, right? And so these are very common systems. And so a food processor is going to have very similar issues to the compressed air system to an uh, automotive parts plant, right? You've got leaks, you've got end uses, you've got people doing inappropriate things with compressed air. Uh, and so these are the common things you run into. And so that sharing within the cohort is a big part of the value of it. And ideally, this, this sharing happens in person. Uh, we're in slightly different times right now, so it's going to happen virtually. Uh, but we have experienced through the cohorts that we did in 2020 uh, that, uh, that that activity does happen. Uh, there is some success there. And so um, the Advanced Manufacturing Office is, is offering these virtual cohorts, our building technology offices, the Federal Energy Management Program is doing it. Uh, they're engaging several Department of Defense facilities in using the Navigator tool to implement energy management systems at facilities across the, uh, the federal government footprint. So a little bit of duplication here in this slide, but uh, just, uh, again, reinforcing the different types of resources that are available through these cohorts. Um, you're getting access to uh, a lot of expertise through the cohort. You've got somebody kind of holding your hand uh, and walking with you as you implement your energy management system. Uh, and, of course, uh, the idea at the end, you'll self-attest uh, to accomplishing these 25 tasks and will be recognized by the Department of Energy. And, and along the way, you're going to reduce a lot of your operating costs. You're going to start to change the culture in your organization around energy management and um, uh, see the, the results of that. Um, let's see. Make sure I didn't advance too many slides here. Um, the I mentioned this before, the, um, the cohorts, the way we're, we've structured these uh, is based on the experience that we've had uh, running uh, cohorts in the past. We've done a lot of different trainings through our Better Plants program. But we also looked at 
what's going on in the utility sector energy efficiency program space. And uh, using cohorts has been just amazingly successful in many of the strategic energy management programs out there. It seems to be um, uh, kind of this amplifying catalytic uh, mechanism. And so um, we are, we are, we've studied and learned the lessons of what other folks have been doing and tried to our best to incorporate that into the, the, uh, the format that we're rolling out here in 2021. Uh, that being said, uh, we're going to kind of practice what we preach. We're going to be do continuous improvement. We're doing a plan D check act on how we, how we uh, run this program. So hopefully in 2022, uh, we'll have uh, learned some lessons and, and they'll be even better. Uh, so this is an initiative that we plan to be engaged in for quite a while, uh, but uh, certainly look forward to working with PenCap and uh, its team and, and helping organizations throughout uh, Pennsylvania implement energy management systems, control their energy costs, and uh, uh, become more competitive uh, and productive. I think that I've run out of slides, so I must be done. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Denise, uh, and uh, you can uh, take over. Okay. Thank you, Ethan. Um, as you can see in the slide, there's Ethan's contact information, um, and so you can email him if you'd like. Uh, so, you know, now that Ethan has educated us on the READY program, right? we're all gonna go and move forward with uh, implementing the program within our facility, right? So it's great information, so, <laughs> right. Um, but you know, the READY program, as he, he mentioned, it's really another way, you know, that you can uh, put an energy management system into your, um, you know, into practice and save energy costs for your facility. So, um, you know, what a nice program. So thank you so much, Ethan. We appreciate you being here and providing us with this information. So um, we'll um, have some questions for you later, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to tell you just a little bit about PENTAP, uh, what PENTAP is and our mission. Um, you know, we are a statewide technical assistance organization. Um, we're charged with supporting Pennsylvania businesses and anchor institutions, um, which includes manufacturers, municipalities, educational institutions, entrepreneurs, um, economic development agencies as well. And we began over 50 years ago as one of the first technical assistance programs in the country. So we're kind of proud of that. Um, that's our mission statement. I'm not gonna read that. Um, I think the most important thing there is obviously, you know, you know, we're here to provide technical assistance and there's our website um, where you can go to to find additional information about PENTAP. Um, this photo, we do do a lot of student engagement and this is me doing an assessment with one of our clients and then we have Penn State students out there, um, you know, learning about everything that they teach in class and then putting it into a real world experience. So, um, our staff, um, we have a diverse staff here at Pent uh, Pentap um, with multiple backgrounds in chemical engineering, electrical engineering, and environmental science. Um, our staff includes a registered environmental auditor, an environmental registered manager, um, renewable energy professional, and uh, Sigma-6 green belts. So as I said, we're very diverse. We do work closely with our clients to understand their needs and make the appropriate matches to the resources within the university and across the state through our um, statewide resource partners. Um, we're connected everywhere um, with these resource partners. And then also our services include energy and environment as well as innovation. And our services are at no cost to our clients because we get federal funding and state funding. Um, we're grant funded. Uh, so um, a lot of dollars uh, come in that way. Um, I'm a grant writer. Uh, so I've been doing that for many years. So not only a grant writer to pay for the PENTAP services, but also we're grant writers for our clients too. 
Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about our services. Um, so our technical advisors for the energy and environment team, um, we, we perform, you know, a couple different areas of the E2 assess, you know, E2 realm. And with the building retuning, uh, B, BRT, we call it, uh, BRT offers those involved in building operations, um, a, a low cost, no cost approach to energy efficiency. So we provide um, the in-class training to a cohort, um, and then we do a building assessment for the participants um, in that cohort and to help identify cost savings. So these are focused mainly on schools, municipality, government buildings, okay? And we provide that training. Uh, and we move that training um, to different areas throughout the state, okay, every year. Our Pollution Prevention Energy Efficiency, P2E2. This is where we help um, companies decrease pollution and increase energy efficiency at their site. Um, this is usually a one-day assessment where Pentap uses our diagnostic tools and um, to help us gather data so we can provide a detailed report listing our recommendations. Um, we also we'll put in the report, the return on the investment for those recommendations. And then we also talk about funding. Is there any funding available for them to implement, you know, um, any of those energy um, recommendations that we talked about? And if there is funding, then we become your grant writer as well. So that's all part of those services. We help um, small to mid-sized manufacturers and ag-related businesses um, throughout the Commonwealth. Okay. Another program we do is called E3, Economy, Energy, and Environment. Um, the E3 events, they build on our P2E2 assessments uh, by incorporating lean manufacturing into that process. So Pentap goes out and does the P2E2 assessments for the manufacturer. And then the, e, the industrial resource centers from across the state um, they would then provide a value stream mapping for the company. Um, so this is usually a three-day training event. So I like to call this the E3 or E2 on steroids because, you know, you're really incorporating the two together. So um, we get federal funding for this, and it's very popular with companies throughout the state. Um, and then, as Ethan alluded to, um, you know, we do help with energy management systems. Our ENMS services provide companies, you know, with that framework to integrate energy efficiency into, you know, if you have existing management systems. Uh, we assist with the 50,001 Ready program. We have helped uh, clients in the past to get their ISO 50001 standard and their superior energy performance certification. We've done cohorts in the past. And so we are getting ready to do a cohort of industries to provide technical assistance um, to go through the 50001 Ready program. So that's gonna start very soon. Um, so, you know, we're looking at companies that wanna go through the program that we will provide them assistance, you know, going through those 25 steps, help them if they need help with benchmarking, need help with putting, you know, um, you know, the paperwork together, you know, any assistance that they can, we're gonna provide, you know, the webinars and, you know, basically what Ethan talked about, um, you know, regarding cohorts, we, we will be the, the coaches for that. So we're getting ready to, um, to start that process very soon. Uh, we do offer opportunities to our Penn State students, as I mentioned um, in this slide is another Penn State student using one of our infrared cameras, looking um, at a piece of equipment. And we use the students we use. We, um, yes, we have Penn State students from the College of Engineering uh, to help them gain real world experience in having them assist us with energy audits. And again, we um, go beyond energy as we also work closely with our clients 
to help them understand their needs and we match them to additional resources within the university and also across the state. Um, on the innovation side of Pentap, um, they provide, you know, it also, we provide technical and entrepreneurial assistance um, directly to our companies. So they, uh, we connect them with the faculty and the students, laboratories and infrastructure of Penn State through the EDA University Center and Engage, as well as to our resource partners located throughout the state. As I mentioned, you know, uh, we have great connections with those partners across the state. Um, and being here at University Park uh, really gives us the great and unique advantage of working with the faculty and um, access to these labs here at University Park. Innovation also brings companies to Penn State's learning factory. Um, if a company is interested like in a prototype or a design or maybe a concept, uh, the learning factory can develop that for a company. So, um, any company sponsoring a project at the Learning Factory, um, the Learning Factory has a team of up to five Penn State students from the various engineering backgrounds to work on that pro uh, project for the company. Some of our past sponsors were like, um, have been GM, Boeing, um, FedEx, uh, who else? Uh, Shell. Um, that's just a couple that I can think of. At the Learning Factory, though, there are a lot of, many of the sponsors are like from small to medium enterprises as well. And some past projects uh, have developed like lightweight surgical lead vests to um, like replacing 3D printing, you know, for obsolete parts, you know. So um, innovation helps student entrepreneurs with the first steps in pitching their business ideas and um, helping to get funding for their startups as well. Um, these are just some impact numbers from PenTap from 2019. We're getting ready to put our 2020 numbers together, but we did help 125 companies in the 42 counties throughout Pennsylvania. Um, and we helped them to save uh, $4.5 million. Uh, there were also 38 projects at the Learning Factory. So um, helping companies get stuff developed, pretty cool stuff. Um, I did mention our website way, way early on, um, but we do have webinars um, coming up. I think we have our first six months worth of webinars that are coming up. Um, developing an innovative culture in your manufacturing business. Um, that's gonna be on February 18th. Um, and you can go to our pentappsu.edu events page, and you can see a whole list of all of the webinars that we have listed. And also we have archive webinars. We archive all of the webinars that we do, and you can see a list of those past webinars that we have there. Um, additionally, we have in March, um, improved efficiency, reduced food processing, energy, water, and waste. So looking more at the pollution part of it um, for food industry. Uh, so there's another webinar that I wanted to list and just pull, you know, uh, bring your attention to it. Um, our webinars are usually from noon to one um, and some of them are from 11 to, to 12. Um, just one thing, one more thing. We have developed some energy toolkits so be sure to check those out on our website. The toolkits are free and they're um, free to use and they, they're filled with all kinds of resources to help you estimate you know, potential savings from energy efficiency projects in your home or at your facility. Um, we have residential, we have um, commercial manufacturers and schools and municipalities. So we have you know, four individual toolkits there and um, yeah, so the tools, they provide the user with energy cost calculators, fact sheets, and you know, all kinds of supplemental resources. So um, 
Remember though, once you're done with those, if you need, you know, additional help, you can contact Pentap, you know, obviously for a professional energy audit to narrow down where to begin on your energy efficient projects. Okay. Um, questions. So we're now at the time, uh, if you have questions for Ethan and so we have a question here from Barry Mays. Back in 2002, three, our region head, Ed Pinero, come and speak to our six county region industrial reps. At this point in time, the automakers were requiring suppliers to achieve the standard. How is the standard different now than back then? Looking forward to working with Pentap on this. Okay. So, um, looking forward to working with Pentap on this, on our, and which is the powder metal industry. So, Ethan, um, is the standard different? Have they, uh, and I understand that they have made some changes to the standard. Do you want to take this question on? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what, I guess I didn't realize that uh, there were uh, automotive uh, manufacturers requiring suppliers to achieve 50,001 certification back in 2002-2003. I've certainly been aware of the requirement to uh, for Tier 1, Tier 2 suppliers to get 9,001 certified, uh, but um, uh, it's interesting. Uh, so uh, the standard went uh, like many of the ISO management standards went through a revision about two years ago to create a common high level structure. And that's those seven categories that I mentioned and that uh, show up in the, the dashboard of the, uh, the navigator. And uh, the idea was to create, ah, there it is, uh, 14,000, yeah. Uh, so the idea was to create a common structure across those standards uh, and common definitions. Uh, and so a few things uh, within the 50,001 standard, I think moved around. Uh, I don't know the full details of it because I was not uh, intimately engaged in, in the issue at the time. Uh, I came on board just as that, that work was being completed. Uh, but uh, I think uh, what makes things, uh, the, the, the goal that I, I so had was to make it easier for organizations like yours to take what they created around the 14,000 or 9,000 and apply it to energy management. Uh, and so that would probably be the biggest one. And I think the other big uh, change was the um, multi-site capability. Uh, so in term, uh, as I mentioned, that they used to have to certify each facility one by one by one. Uh, and now you can get an organizational uh, certification and have several sites in that umbrella. Uh, for example, in our Superior Energy Performance Program, we recently uh, received uh, multi-site certifications from a couple of very large uh, Fortune 100 companies. And in the past, they had certified individual facilities. This time around, they rolled them all up into a single one, and then they have uh, those sites underneath it. And that, I suspect it reduced the cost of getting recertified by thousands, maybe tens of thousands of dollars. So that would be the biggest change. Uh, so I would say it's you know, easier and better, maybe, uh, in summary, than it used to be. Okay, thank you, um, Ethan and Barry. I hope that that answers your question. Do we have any other questions? for Ethan or myself. Okay. Um, well, you can type in questions as yeah, I, the, I just- Yeah, I saw 50,000. Oh, I was just gonna joke. I said the 50,001 standard always elicits lots and lots of questions. <laughs> 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 well, um, what we're going to do, like I mentioned earlier, is um, we are going to archive the webinar, okay, and then um, you guys will get a follow-up email, okay, regarding this webinar. So thank you, everyone. Thank you once again, Ethan, for presenting uh, this information. Mm -hmm.
Um, we enjoyed hearing from you today. And I think it's just great information myself, um, you know, and I, I'm so happy that you guys have made this an easier process for companies to, to follow and to go through. So kudos to DOE for doing that. And we truly appreciate that. Um, uh, for our participants, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for being online today. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. We all are busy um, and we all know that. Um, so I hope that you've learned something uh, from Ethan and learned about the 50,001 Ready program. And, you know, look forward to maybe having you on future webinars with Pentap. So thank you and everyone have a great day.